We just have to continue to play solid football, get the mistakes corrected that we need to correct. It's going to be a challenge. We have a lot of very tough teams. We got to go on the road and we got to still finish the season with three division opponents. This team learned some last year uh, when we were in a similar situation, but I think uh, the way Coach Zim has prepared this team in the off season, hopefully we'll be up for the challenge. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Skull Stories. I'm your host, Mike Wabshaw, inside TCO Studios at Winter Park. Normally, Skull Stories, a very historical program, but tonight we're going to change course a little bit. We're going to talk to current Vikings general manager Rick Spielman about the 2017 Vikings, the current Vikings, the first half of the season, the first eight games, which saw the Vikings go 6-2 and two and go into their bye week atop the NFC North. And then, of course, the final eight games of the regular season and hopefully a playoff push coming up. We talk about all of that with GM Rick Spielman in tonight's conversation. Before we get to that, though, a reminder, the Vikings back on the field this Sunday. They play the Washington Redskins at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. Kickoff noon central time. Of course, you can hear the game right here on the Vikings Radio Network. The pregame starts at 10 with Mike Musman. And then Paul Allen will bring you the boom along with Pete Bursich analyzing from the booth. And, of course, former Vikings Greg Coleman and Ben Lieber providing analysis from the sidelines. That is all going to happen on Sunday as the Vikings kick off the second half of the season. To get the details on the first half of the season, though, we chatted with GM Rick Spielman last week as the team headed into its bye week. Rick had some interesting things to say. Let's get it started right here with his general analysis of the first eight games. All right, Rick, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time as always. Before we get too deep, let's just look generally at the team and through the first eight games. How do you feel about the team so far? Well, I thought Coach Zimmer and the staff has done an outstanding job. Um, we've had some injuries, um, but the way they've uh, developed the roster, uh, I know it started back in the offseason. Coach Zimmer wanted to put a point of emphasis on how we can improve off of, uh, off of last year, and you're seeing some of those results so far. Um, I know that uh, offense is playing much better than it was last year at this time. If you look at the stats and the rating charts, I know um, it's, it's quite drastically improved and you give a lot of credit to Pat Shermer and the offensive staff for the adjustments they made to the scheme. So um, it's you know been a successful first eight games, but um, you know we've got a ways to go yet. At the bye week, is it more about what we are doing well or what we need to do better when you evaluate the roster? I know the coaches right now stressed on what where we need to get better at. Uh, I think making some tweaks here and there, but over these two practices during the bye week, the point of emphasis was where are our weak spots right now? Um, where do we need to get better just from A to Z? Um, you know, from game situations to uh, where we can improve on third, potentially third downs or not, uh, things we're doing good, things we're doing bad. That's part of the assessment when you get into the buy. And having to buy at this time gives you a pretty good picture of the things you're doing well and the things you're not. And the point of emphasis is going forward. Let's try to get the things corrected on on how we can improve. At quarterback, lots of discussion about that, of course, but. When you look at Case, how do you feel like he's handled everything that's come at him so far? Case has done a phenomenal job. I mean, he stepped in, you know, Sam started out and played at a very high level in that opener against New Orleans and unfortunately got hurt. And this is one of the reasons why we brought Case in, not only because he's had game experience, um, has been a starter in the past, but just his football character and his passion for the game and how he prepares and since he's came in he, he's done a phenomenal job pat adjusts the scheme a little bit to what he does it's not changing the whole scheme but calling plays that may be his strengths uh, to give him the best chance to have success and uh, in case uh, case has, has been out went out and has, has executed and I think we've been playing pretty good on the defensive side of the ball special teams and then uh, haven't really 
lost much uh, when Case have come in and, and uh, has played on the offensive side. What do you think about Teddy and how he's handled the last 15 months? Teddy's, everybody, you can't say enough about Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, not only what a phenomenal person he is, uh, what a leader he is, but how hard he has attacked his rehab and wanting to prove that he can come back from such a devastating injury. So he's worked extremely hard. He's been past practicing over these past couple of weeks. We'll get another week to evaluate where he's at before we have to make a decision next Wednesday. When everyone wants answers at quarterback, talk about behind the scenes and all the teamwork and collaboration that goes into it with this, with Shugs, with Zim, and with everyone involved. We operate our business um, with everybody communicating because that's the key. Everybody has to be on the same page. Everybody, you know, in Teddy's situation, you know, we're going to take the lead from the medical staff and from his doctor. Um, and But we'll never put out any player unless he's able to go out and play the game. All right, Dalvin Cook goes down. It looks like he was going to have a great season, obviously, maybe be in the running for Rookie of the Year. He goes down, and then McKinnon and Murray, they come in and instantly produce. Both have had over 100 yards from scrimmage in games this season. Are you pleased with them? I think there's a couple things um, we wanted, you know, in our off-season planning, wanted to make sure we did have enough depth, um, too. I think Tony Sperano and revamping that offensive line and the job he's done, uh, getting those guys to play at the level they're currently playing at, and to have the quality backs that we have. And I know Latavius, when we signed him, we knew he was going to have off-season surgery and it was going to take him some time, but I really think you're starting to see what he can bring to the offense, and I think he's just going to get stronger as the season goes along. And to have a back like uh, the Jet, you know, who not only can do things in a running game, but in a passing game as well. With Jarek, you drafted him, so obviously you liked him from his time at Georgia Southern, and you've seen him grow and develop over time. He's had many different roles with the team. Has it been a treat to watch him grow? Well, you know, he was a quarterback, uh, kind of a wishbone option type quarterback coming out, um, but he's grown in a position. And the one thing that we're very fortunate at is all these coaches are great at developing the talent that we bring in. If we can go out uh, as a personnel staff and find the traits that they're looking for uh, and guys that have physical tools that can be developed, um, Coach Zimmer has done an outstanding job putting together a staff that can develop that talent. Have you been impressed with Pat Elfline? Uh, Pat's, yeah, for a rookie coming in and starting at that position, um, you know, we spent a lot of time with him uh, as we got prepared for the draft. Uh, everybody knew about his physical ability, but at that position, you also have to be very smart because you have to make a lot of the checks and calls, and there's been a lot put on his plate. But him or any of these rookies that are getting the opportunity to play, um, you, you see them evolving every game, and the more game experience they get, the more things that they see, um, they learn from that, uh, and they continue to grow. At offensive tackle last year, just a revolving door there because of injuries. You had a guy in place, he plays well, he gets hurt. You have another guy in place, emergency fashion, he gets hurt. This year, it's, it's the opposite. Riley Reef comes in, has not allowed a sack, and has played in all the games. That really helps the offense. And the guys that we have lost to injury, they haven't been significant season and in injuries, and hopefully that will continue as we move forward. Um, but the group, there was specific traits uh, when we went to rebuild the offensive line that fit Pat's system and, uh, and what Tony Sperano wanted. So we tried to identify those players that had those physical traits on what they were going to be asked to do on the field. And um, I think basically we have five new starters, and Berger started for us last year but has moved to a different position. So we brought in five new guys, uh, basically at five new positions, and it's been fun to see them as we went through training camp and how that group started to gel uh, and then has continued to gel and, and getting better and better as we uh, – move through the season. Did playing against Reef as he was a member of the Lions for five seasons help in the evaluation of him going into free agency? Yeah, well, we've, we go all the way back to, you know, evaluate what we thought of him coming out of college. Uh, and then when the opportunity came um, to 
sign him during the free agency period, he was our top target. And uh, I know they moved him over to the right side, but we felt that what we have seen in, through his career in Detroit, that he was a very capable left tackle as well and uh, kept him on the left side and, and he's been playing at a high level for us. Okay, good stuff from Rick Spielman so far, general manager of your Minnesota Vikings, and more to come after the break. But first, a programming note, more great stuff coming to you right here on the Vikings Radio Network and FM 100.3 KFAN. Vikings Country, join host Mike Musman along with Andrew Sendejo at the Truck Yard in St. Paul on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. for a live broadcast of Vikings Country. You could win some great prizes, including tickets in the Miller Lite Lounge at U.S. Bank Stadium. Visit vikings.com slash vikingscountry for more info and a full schedule. And for the rest of Skull Stories, please stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Skull Stories. I'm your host, Mike Wapshaw. More from General Manager Rick Spielman, who is the featured guest tonight on Skull Stories in a minute. But first... Be the first to know breaking Vikings news, access video on demand, and get ticket alerts all on your phone with the Minnesota Vikings app. Download today in the App Store and Google Play. Also, do you know a family that has come upon hard times and could use the best Christmas ever? The local-based nonprofit BCE is now accepting family nominations through November 15th. Nominate a family in need now at kfan.com, keyword community. All right, more from our conversation last week with Vikings general manager Rick Spielman right now. Why do you think Adam Thielen just gets better all the time? You know, everybody talks about what a great story is, but he's turning into be a pretty great receiver. And he may not be the most physically imposing player, the fastest guy, but he's such a good football player and has such an instinct for the game that those are the things that you can't teach. And we saw that, you know, we were very fortunate to have him try out at our rookie mini camp and then signed him and you seen him on the practice squad and developing and what he was given our defense looks while he was developing as a receiver and the sign that I usually look for and I know our coaches look for is these young guys, they may not have a significant role on the offense or defensive side of the ball yet, but what are they doing on special teams? And when you see seen Adam Thielen, when he became active and started playing for us, not on offense, but he became one of our top core special teams players. And that gives you a pretty good indication of what type of football player that he can potentially be. And you add on top his character, his work ethic, his passion for the game. Um, that's why he is who he is today. Overall, the wide receiver group actually has some depth. Do you feel good about that? Yeah, we felt very strong about the depth. And when, you know, Diggs went out for a couple games and Jarius came in and then had a big game. And anytime Jarius gets called upon, he makes plays for us. And then Adam, and then we got Michael Floyd, who was slowed down a little bit with a hamstring injury, but we have that. We got Laquan Treadwell starting to develop now. Um, and we have two young guys uh, that we drafted that we're also very excited about. So as you look, and you look at some of our games, and if you look down at the stat sheet, it's not one guy getting 20 catches. You see in how evenly the ball is spread out amongst that group, amongst the tight ends, and amongst the uh, running backs as well. What does a healthy Stephon Diggs do to put stress on a defense? Not only is he a, a phenomenal hands catcher uh, and can make contested catches, but he's a very good route runner. He brings, brings uh, some explosiveness to our offense. Uh, and just like Adam, he has a knack uh, for making plays, especially in critical situations in the game. What do you think about our defense? What does it do particularly well from the standpoint of another offensive coordinator trying to find ways to beat it. When they turn on the tape and watch Zim's defense, what do they see? I think the biggest thing is what Coach Zimmer and that defensive staff have done. One, it always comes back to how they've developed the guys that we have on this roster. And secondly, um, the scheme uh, and to watch these guys work as one unit. And Coach Zimmer always preaches team first. 
and just do your job and the next man does his job, then it functions and you can make some big plays and big plays will come your way. Um, so I think everybody understands that, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And you look at an Everson Griffin, um, who when you watch the tape, offenses are trying to chip him, trying to double team him, trying to slide protection his way. But what Andre Patterson has done is teaching him how to handle that when teams do that. And he's still having a, a very, very productive year. And it helps when you have other guys. They, they can't just focus on one player. I think we have enough in the front seven um, that it makes it difficult for offenses to account for, for everybody that we have up there. So you think with the defense, it's a big synergy thing. It's always, it always looks like a group of 11 operating as one. And I think that's evolved since Coach Zimmer has been here, and a lot of these guys have been in the system now going into their fourth year and they understand the scheme, they understand what's asked of them, and they, they work together as one unit. If you could nitpick the defense last year, it would probably be the run defense. But you can't do that this year. They've been really good against the run. Why do you think that is? I, I think because we're playing with basically the same personnel, but I think it's with Coach Zimmer and that defensive staff. They're always looking and evaluating on what we can do better and what can we tweak here or there to, to make us more effective in an area that maybe uh, we're not as good as we need to be. And I think a lot of the off-season work that the coaching staff has done uh, and a lot of tweaks and adjustments they made have, have, have shown up so far through the season. There's always been an sort of underrated factor with Linval Joseph, it seems, especially if all you do is look at box scores. But if you watch the games at all, especially lately, you can't help but notice Linval. Well, if you notice how many tackles he has versus the run compared to other defensive linemen, he's going to jump out of that box. He's the anchor of the defense. Yeah. And uh, there's not too many offensive centers in this league that can handle him in one-on-one -on -one situations. He's just a big, powerful, explosive man. Uh, and Andre Patterson, all those guys up front, he's really done a great job. And from when we signed him as an unrestricted free agent out of the, from the Giants that year into where he's at now, a lot of credit goes to, to, to Andre and how he's developing. Barr and Kendricks and the way they play together, I know you give Zimmer and the coaches a lot of credit for that, but do you think any of that goes back to their days playing together at UCLA? Well, they're familiar with each other, and uh, I know they're very close. Um, and it's just ironic that we were able to get both of them a year apart, but ended up on the same team. Um, but I think them not only playing together in college, but being together here, um, they, have, they, they know almost instinctively where each other is going to be in, uh, on the field. And, it's, and both of them are, are doing a tremendous job for us. They play well together, but they do different things. But they blend well together nicely, right? And it's, it's how Coach Zimmer uses them and understands the strengths of each one of them and puts them in situations so those strengths get magnified and gives them an opportunity to make plays. How do you evaluate and attribute value to a player like Xavier who basically is never thrown at, so there's just not a lot of tape to go off of? Well, if he's not getting thrown at, that's pretty good value. <laughs> so, But when he is thrown at, you know, he, he's, he's shown to be a shutdown corner here. And the one thing I think about not only the phenomenal job the coaches have done in getting these guys to play at the level they're playing, but we run, you know, as we honed in and extended Linville Joseph, extended Everson Griffin, extended Xavier Rose, those guys have even took their game up another notch. And that's what you want to see. And that's a tribute to the chemistry and the, and the leadership and the quality of character of players that we have down in that locker room. And when you've been around the guys, and our philosophy has always been, we should know these guys better than than anyone. And that's why we want to always try to, to keep as many of these young guys and extend them. Uh, and it's been great to see that those guys, even though they got new contract extensions, that they're playing even at a higher level. Do you remember Xavier's rookie season? I mean, you drafted him. You remember him going through it for the first time. And look where he is now. I mean, he's really come a long way. Well, I think you have to be patient with all these rookies. Everybody thinks that a rookie comes in and instantly knows what to do. Um, but there's so much behind the scenes that they have to learn. 
uh, everything, and especially in Coach Zimmer's defense, not only the schematic part of it, but the techniques being taught because techniques are part of the scheme. Uh, and you know, I think you're starting to see that now where it's, where it's clicking and, and Trey Waynes is playing at a pretty high level right now. And he's getting a lot of targets thrown his way because no one's throwing it at Xavier. But now that has really uh, enhanced his development and um, him learning how to play corner in, in this scheme. And I see George Edwards, I see Jerry Gray, I see Coach Zimmer out there with all these defensive backs and really working with them uh, to, to make sure that they're playing up to the level they're playing at. Harrison Smith feels like he never makes a mistake, and I'm sure you and Zim find one on Monday mornings when you turn film on, but basically he never makes mistakes, right? He is very sound in the system. He's the quarterback at the back end. Um, always has a knack for putting himself in position uh, to make plays or to be in position to have an impact uh, on our defense. And really understands what what the coaches are asking not only of him but 10 other guys uh, on how to function in this defense and he is he's kind of the glue on the back end all right kai last year at this time you're going through a kicking change you find kai now kai has the most made field goals in the nfl and he has the most made field goals in the nfl since you signed him last november is it nice to have that stability and consistency at the position? Yeah, no, he's done a phenomenal job since we've signed him. And I know uh, Kai is, is like most kickers, have to go through a period of time where they may be on a team or two before they, they find their home. And, you know, we were very fortunate to, uh, to pick him up last year, and uh, he's been doing a phenomenal job for us. Down the stretch, what are the challenges for the Vikings? A lot of road games, some division games. What do you see down the final stretch here for eight games? Well, we just have to continue to play solid football, uh, get the mistakes corrected that we need to correct, improve in areas that we need to improve, and it's going to be a challenge. We have a lot of very tough teams. we got to go on the road uh, a lot more, than the, um, and we got to still finish the season with three division opponents. So it'll be a tough challenge for us. I think the, this team learned some, you know, last year, uh, when we were in a similar situation, but I think uh, the way Coach Zim has prepared this team in the offseason, hopefully we'll be up for the challenge. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Skull Stories. We thank you for listening, and we thank General Manager Rick Spielman for his time. He doesn't talk very much during the season, wants to focus on football, but he took some time with us over the bye week, and we appreciate it. We will continue with a historical look on the Minnesota Vikings here on Skull Stories next week, Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m., so we hope you stay tuned for that. Until then, and on behalf of Skull Stories producer Nate Vaughn, I'm your host, Mike Wapshaw, encouraging you to stay tuned the rest of the week for great Vikings programming right here, and also to make sure you catch the Vikings and Redskins Sunday, noon central time, is the kick. Thanks for listening to Skull Stories. Talk to you later.